What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room. Week five of season six of the GBA is the Giantes or team building for Battler X and his team, the Milwaukee Sawsbucks. Technically, the Milwaukee Sawsbucks are still owned by former coach Magnitude, aka Steve. But uh, the coach is now Battler X, and he's. Uh, you know, new to the format and very un not a lot is known about this man, but uh, he's not started the season off that well. But I, whenever I see teams like that, listen, guys, I don't know if you guys remember me from the last two seasons. I started both seasons 0 and 3, and then both seasons I was a playoff contender, missing out only by differential. So <laughs> this starting off with not the greatest record doesn't mean anything in this format. He's made a lot of trades. His roster is nothing like what it was when he originally drafted it. He's made lots of moves, and I think it's been for the better in this case. So uh, we're going to talk about the two teams a little bit. Uh, let's start off by going over my 11. Uh, it's going to be really important to do this time because there's a change on the roster. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have the Entei, Manaphy, Nidoking, Zapdos, Cresselia, Mega Absol, Chestnut, Reggie Rock, Ditto, Miss Magius, and the newcomer, Mr. Grand Bullington Jr. the third. He's not actually going to be nicknamed that, guys. It's Grand Bull. Uh, I traded Miltank for Grand Bull. I don't want to go too deeply into this. Uh, there's, I, I ran a lot of calcs and uh, in team building every single week, Miltank's kind of been getting pushed aside because the roles she fills aren't effective enough against my opponents with the team that I have. Uh, I, I, I have a lot of great power and risky setup potential that teams have a difficult time preparing for, and Miltank kind of kills all my momentum uh, pretty much just to get up rocks or to get off a, 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 a heal bell, just run a little cleric work. I don't like that she's forced into that role on my team, but she is. I don't have a lot of other clerics. I've got Heal Bell on Manaphy, uh, but Granbull has Heal Bell too, so Granbull still has that. Granbull has great offensive presence, which is something that Miltank is a little bit lacking in. Miltank has reliable recovery, that's true, but defensively is inferior to several other of my walls, even ones who have reliable recovery, that being Chestnut and Cresselia, and even Zapdos uh, to, a, to a degree. So. The typing didn't really do anything for my team, and Granbull provides me with a fairy type, um, and that's great for me. It provides me with additional coverage against dark types. Just in general, it's it's going to be a really big boon to my team, and so I'm glad to have Granbull on board, uh, help provide a little extra resistance against those dragon types also. Let's go over Battler X's roster. They are tiered in a manner that is somewhat... Uh, let me move this down a little bit. I don't like these floating so high up there. That's better. That looks good. Uh, it's tiered somewhat in order from what I would assume is most likely to least likely. But again, teams aren't just six individual Pokemon put on a team. It's, a, it's built to fulfill a purpose. And so I don't necessarily think that the top six are the most likely brings. I'll go into why I think some things are likely and some things are less likely as I go over the team. But his 11 are Heatran, Slowbro, Gengar, Mega Pinsir, Honchcrow, Sandslash, Electivire, Mianchao, Venusaur, Miloetta, and Salzbuck. So, the top row, I'm almost positive he's bringing. He's probably going to bring Heatran, he's probably going to bring Slowbro, and he's probably going to bring Gengar. Heatran is a great answer to the all-powerful Sacred Fire that I can shoot off from Entei. He is very effective defensively against several of my mom. There's a ch reasons he might not bring it. It does not shore up well against Manaphy. It gets annihilated by Nidoking. And uh, you, I do learn Bulldoze as a potential move on Entei, and so that could potentially threaten him out too. Um, actually, I think I'm going out of order here. Let's let's jump over to what I'm bringing this week. Uh, I am bringing Zap Zap the Zapdos, uh, DDG the Cresselia, Remix the Ditto, Absolutely the Absol, Decisions the Entei, and Prince 
the Nitto King. Now, uh, if you wanted to just fast forward this, you could go pause on every single one of those Mon and just kind of look over them yourself and just move on to the next one. Or you can listen to me kind of explain about these sets a little bit and we'll go over my thought process going into this game. So, Zap Zap is here. As my primary stop check, a uh, defensive switch into Mega Pinsir. It also provides me a decent switch into Haunchcrow. It's a decent switch into Electivire. It's a good offensive answer to Slowbro. And in general, I just think it has a really good matchup here. It provides me with Defog options, and it's running a specially defensive set with Leftovers. So, Zap Zap is... Being especially defensive set, you're like, isn't he supposed to be a Mega Pinsir answer? Yes, he is. Yes, he certainly is. And I think he can do that even as specially defensive. Mega Pinsir really, really does not have anything for uh, for Zapdos. Uh, if I were to run physically defensive, that is. And I think if he sees Zap Zap and sees it as a switch in, that's going to be his first inclination that I'm running physically defensive. And... You know, I have another matchup against him, and maybe I will next time, but for this time, I think especially defensive does the trick just fine, and it uh, provides me with more safety switching into the likes of the Slowbro. His moveset is Thunderbolt, Hidden Power, Ground, Roost, and Defog. Roost and Defog kind of standard for my defensive Zap Zap sets, Thunderbolt for Stab, and Hidden Power, Ground, because it's going to hit the... Heatran quad effectively and the Electivire super effectively. Um, I was thinking Hidden Power Ice there, but it doesn't really do a ton for me outside of super effective coverage for Saws, Buck, Venusaur, and Sand Slash. And I just think I don't really need that quite as much as I need the super effective coverage against Electivire and Heatran because they're both more likely brings and they're both relatively safe switch-ins to Zap Zap in general. So that's the reason for that. Uh, I think, yeah, defensively he, he matches up really well. He's got a good amount of offensive presence to put the hurt on some of his other mons. And uh, I think Zap Zap's going to be doing a lot of work this week. DDG is here. DDG is running a specially defensive set. Because, again, he doesn't super need the physical defense uh, in order to take on some of these other monsters the defense investment i have mean that the uh, a shadow ball from a gengar when i'm at full uh, if it's life orb timid will not to hit kaomi and the psy shock will actually kill him after one tick of life orb damage so it'll do like 95 percent on average or something like that so really it has a chance to one hit ko depending on his defensive investment so absolutely annihilates the toxic is there for the slow bro uh slow bro is not really an issue to my team but it's one of those really annoying pokemon that you don't want to let it just free switch in constantly so pretty much every single one of my mons has something for it just to make sure that it's not gonna have too much safety against me uh you i like to do that with a lot of my team building make sure that i'm putting pressure on mons that are supposed to be cruxes of of team sets so you'll see me do that for things uh, like their primary walls and things like that and then kind of give stop checks to other, other things uh, notable issues I have here obviously I can't really do much of the heat trend that's okay I not every single mon's gonna have every single matchup I want because I do have heat trend answers but DDG is still a relatively safe switch into that heat trend so I'm not too worried about anything in that regard Remixes here, a couple of reasons. One, I don't want to let a really well-timed Swords Dance from Mega Pinsir win him the game. There are several other Mon who I would love to be able to revenge. Um, it's a safe switch into the Meloetta. Meloetta can't really do anything to itself. Um, if the Meloetta does come, it's likely that the Meloetta brings Shadow Ball to try and allow it to take on Cresselia, but Shadow Ball doesn't affect itself because it's normal Psychic, so Remix could switch in on Meloetta, be immune to the Shadow Ball, resist the Psychic, and uh, that's all she wrote. If Meloetta happens to hit a Relic Song on me on my switch in and switch over to the other form, uh, if it's if it was packing psychic in the first place, I'll be able to hit it super effective in that. Uh, I can 
also just move around it based on that. I don't think it's going to want to spam Relic Song if, it, if he is a pirouette form. And if he is pirouette form, DDG walls him to heck and back. So Remix is a really good switch into that. Really good switch into the Venusaur. It allows me to be a momentum grabber if I see you turning or volt switching on the Electivire or the Mien Xiao. Uh, against the Salzbuck, if the Salzbuck's trying to play any shenanigans with uh, Grass Whistle or uh, running, what is it, uh, <laughs> Grassy Terrain and then trying to get sleep on Secret Power or anything like that, Remix can't be put to sleep by that. He'll resist it because it's a Grass type move and I am Grass type if I switch in on the Saul's Buck. It's a good answer to potentially setting up on any of these other Mon that he might have. Uh, good switch into the Heatran, good switch into the Slowbro, who again, his stab can't hurt himself. And uh, a good Revenger for the Gengar, I just have to see whether or not that's a Scarfed Gengar right off the right on the get-go. Could be potentially Scarfed. Other potential Scarfers on his team, the Heatran, I mean anything could be Scarfed, but realistically the Heatran, the Gengar, maybe the Haunchcrow and the Electivire are the most likely Scarfers. I have seen Scarfed Mian Shaos before, but I don't think it really serves much of a purpose for his team. If he brings Mian Shaos, he's going to be bringing probably Reckless and um, trying to really punch holes with it. D but Mian Shao doesn't really set up... The reason I have Mian Shao so low, even though it is pretty powerful of a Pokemon, it doesn't have the power to break through any of my walls. It just doesn't hit them hard enough. And... Um, Defensively, pretty much everything on my team annihilates it, so I don't, I don't see him bringing it. The same thing with the Venusaur; it just doesn't have a good matchup. You'd think like, oh, it hits super effective against the Manaphy, but because it's not Mega Venusaur, it doesn't resist the Ice Beam, and I can just really, really put the hurt on it. The Salzbug, kind of the same reason. I, I just don't think he has anything for it. Let's keep moving on my team, though. We got the Mega Absol here running a um. A relatively standard Jolly set running Knock Off, Play Rough, Rock Slide, and Protect. So, I looked through everything and tried to build the team with the correct coverage for everything that I needed coverage for. I was really considering running Ice Beam. The reason I'm running Protect is Battler X has a pretty high average speed on his team. There's not a lot of things that Absol outspeeds pre-Mega Evolution with a 75 base speed. If he runs speed investment on a lot of things, he can get that. So I, I think there's a good chance I'm going to want to lead with Absol, get the Mega Evolution off safely with a Protect, kind of gauge my lead matchups, and that way I immediately have my Magic Bounce potential for future switch-ins on any of these Mon. Knockoff is my primary stab. It basically one hit KOs anything that is offensive on his team that doesn't resist it. If it is an offensive mon that resists it, uh, Play Rough hits it super effective. So the Haunch Crow, for example, and the Mien Xiao uh, both hit super effective by the Play Rough. The Rock Slide is there for the. Uh, Mega Pinsir primarily. It's a safe move to go for against the Haunch Crow also. Um, it is neutral against the Heatran, which is a potential switch in. Yeah, it's just in general, I, th I think Rock Slide is that additional coverage that I I'd really like in that slot. I was considering Zen Headbutt hits the Venusaur super effective, but Venusaur is not a great person for Absol to stay in on. Per se, so I, I don't really need that. And uh, of course, yeah, protect to get that Mega Evo off. Running max speed just because 115 base speed is something that he can compete with, and he should. Uh, he, if I'm gonna, and I'm gonna force him to. He's not gonna take anything for free. He does have a base speed 110, and I don't want to allow any. You know, I could pull a couple of points here and a couple of points there, uh, but I, it's to no real avail. I want to keep Mega Absol as fast as possible in this matchup. Decisions is coming as a choice scarf decisions. Ooh, let's talk about this a little bit. Decisions doesn't need the raw power that the band provides him because the Sawsbucks team isn't really bulky outside of its walls. Its walls um, shore up well against decisions. Uh, Slowbro is a good switch into decisions. 
but I can maneuver around that. The uh, Heatran gets annihilated by Bulldoze, unless he's carrying, what is it, Shucka Berry? Um, so, I think it's Shucka. Sacred Fire otherwise is just so much power against so many members of his team. Uh, it's great against the, you know, so much power. The extreme speed there, he does have knockoff potential on his team. Uh, I wouldn't mind if this, if Entei lost his scarf, that's okay. I keep the extreme speed there. Uh, I didn't really have anything that needed to take its spot, so it's not really shooing out anything. Stone Edge provides me with super effective coverage for the flying types uh, on his team. Uh, it's also a really safe move for me to go for if I'm in against the Mega Pinsir, for example, because I will outspeed it, and the it doesn't it it means I don't activate Flash Fire on the uh, on the Heatran if the Heatran chooses to switch in against Decisions. He has two walls that like to switch in against Decisions if I'm going for Sacred Fire. I might still go for it quite a lot anyway, just because it's so obvious that I wouldn't go for it when he has those Pokemon around. But it's all about figuring out the situation, who I'm in against, whether or not it's a wise move for me to go for it. The uh, Bulldoze, of course, is there for the... Uh, pretty much just for the Heatran, not really anyone else. And, uh... Yeah, that's, that's all for him. He's running max speed, because I need to. Uh, he's got several pretty fast Pokemon in the base speed, 95s, etc, etc, so I want to make sure my speed is as high as possible also for him. Mr. Prince! Mr. Prince is also Choice Scarf, guys. I have three Scarfers on my team this week, and I know that's going to throw him off a lot. King is running Sheer Force, Choice Scarf, Earth Power, Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, and his last move is Stealth Rock. That's just in case uh, there's a situation which I desperately need to get rocks up. I didn't need the additional coverage. Earth Power, Ice Beam, and Shadow Ball does it all. Earth Power will destroy the Heatran. Shadow Ball will destroy the Slowbro and the Gengar. Ice Beam is super effective against the Mega Pinsir and the Haunch Crow and the Sand Slash. Uh, I have Earth Power for the Electivire, Earth Power will one-shot the Mian Shao, Ice Beam will uh, two-hit KO, I believe, the Mega Venus or the regular Venusaur if it is defensive. Uh, Miluetta will not will die to the Earth Power, and Sawsbuck will die to the Ice Beam. So really have everything I need in those three moves. The last move is kind of a kind of a whatever, and I think Stealth Rock's a good uh, a good option there because rocks do really hurt his team. So finally, let's kind of go over the, the reason I've ordered things on his team the way they are. Obviously, his walls because he needs them to try and answer some of my defensive mon. Uh, I think there's a good chance that the Slowbro either goes Rocky Helmet or Assault Vest to try and counter the... I guess the Manaphy or the... Just to provide me with a little bit of a safer against the uh, Entei. But I don't think Sacred Fire makes contact. So I don't know that he would go Rocky Helmet there. Maybe for the Absol, if he's predicting the Absol. Uh, the Gengar, I think, is coming. Probably he'll go Life Orb because he'll want to try and be able to take on the Cresselia, but there's a chance he goes... Um, there's a chance he goes Specs or Scarf. Uh, Gengar can really do anything. Um, Gengar is pretty powerful, but I do have answers on my team for it. Uh, a lot of offensive answers. It's not safe against a lot of my Pokemon. It has a difficult time coming in. Uh, it, it really needs to catch me off guard, locked into the wrong move, um, but I, it just... He's got to play really intelligently and offensively with it for it to generate any kind of momentum. And I do have switch-ins for it, so he's got to be careful with that Gengar. The Mega Pinsir, of course, is an absolute monster. My goal here is to make sure that all of my Mon outspeed it prior to its evolution, Mega Evolution. If I don't outspeed it prior to its Mega Evolution, I want to make sure that it's a Pokemon that can take a hit from it and hit it back pretty hard. Luckily, that is something that DDG and Zap Zap can both do. If I get rocks up, that thing is really pressured also, and Remix can revenge it really easily. Haunch Crow is not necessarily the fifth most likely bring in my eyes. It has the potential to be a good bring in lieu of Gengar coming. And also, if he's maybe trying to go for like a Moxie Scarf sweep at the very end, it's hard to say. Haunch Crow is a weird Pokemon. Um, I think that the dark type coverage is something that is desirable when they see DDG to try and kind of counter that, but he actually can't two hit KO DDG with, uh, even with Night Slash, so hard to say, hard to say, but 
it's a pretty good it's a pretty good Pokemon so I I could see him bringing it but again it's not fifth in a vacuum it's not like the fifth most likely mon for him to bring it's kind of it's likelihood of it being brought increases as Gengar like disappears uh, Sand Slash, I don't think it matches up well against my team, but he's brought it almost every single week. Uh, I think he is nervous about ha me getting rocks up, or anyone getting rocks up against his Mega Pinsir. So I think he likes to try and bring that uh, pretty much all the time. It is very defensive, so it can take some hits from the likes of Decisions and maybe Absol. But uh, not a lot, uh, not forever. He doesn't have reliable recovery there, so there's a good chance that he gets whittled down if he does come. I'm not super scared of it. Uh, there's lots of answers for me as far as switch-ins are concerned. DDG is a great switch-in, so not too concerned with that, but there is a good chance he brings it. Electivire is there. Electivire was a great pickup for him. Looking at his team, it provides him with a lot of really interesting safe switches. Uh, so the Slowbro and the... Mega Pinsir are both weak to electric, and so here you go, you switch in, you get a motor drive. However, the only thing on my team that's got electric coverage is Zap Zap, and I don't even know that that threatens me. I don't care if I give him motor drive, because so what, he's faster, he can't take on Zap Zap, and I have hidden power ground to hit it super effective and potentially to hit KO it. So, and then after that, I can also uh, potentially switch in with Remix and get that speed boost anyway. So. Not super worried about the Electivire, however, it does provide him with safe switch-ins. The Mien Xiao, as I mentioned earlier, it's it gets neutrally taken down by a lot of the stab on my team. Offensively, it can be pretty strong, but DDG shuts it down. Mega Venusaur, uh, again, a little less likely. It could be brought as a potential uh, Manaphy counter. I'm not even bringing Manaphy this week. Milouetta, uh, she's Trixie. She's a Trixie Pokemon, but she can't take on Cresselia. And Saw's Buck again if he wants to play some shenanigans. So that's my breakdown of the team, guys. Let me know what you think and let me know kind of any some set ideas that you might have thought would work really well this week in the comment section down below. If you have any questions about why I did this or why I didn't do that, definitely ask me. I feel like I already packed these with as much information as possible. I know you guys sometimes watch these team builders to kind of get a sense of how to improve in your own respective leagues that you play in with your friends or if you're in uh, any of the other... Uh, any of the other YouTube leagues out there. So um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear any critiques you have on my team. And if you have any questions about stuff that I didn't get around to mentioning, why I did this, why I did that, or if I even didn't think about it, definitely leave that in the comment section down below. Give me a like if you guys like this video, please. Everything helps, and I really do appreciate that. If you guys are interested in checking out Battler X or the Milwaukee Saws Bucks, I will leave a link to that in the description down below this video. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.